please welcome Tony Romeo, everybody. So uh, I'm very happy to be here tonight. I give a warning to the first row. It's high of the handicap night, and I have a glass eye. So I give a little warning in the front row in case it falls out. A little sound check first. I give one of these, one of these. It's very real. Is everybody okay? Uh, don't feel sorry for me. I think everyone in New York City should get at least one eye removed from their head. I have no problem getting a seat in the subway. You know, I walk right in, look around, you know, guy gets up, holy mackerel. I sit right down, it's no big deal. No big deal. I come from the world of advertising where everybody's full of crap anyway, so I want to tell you this right now. I go to meetings, right, and people deny I have a glass eye. You know, they, this new world of text messaging, you know, I tell them I have a glass eye. Say, you have a glass eye? I have no idea I have a glass eye. Especially those from Britain, they're really off the wall people, you know? I have a glass eye, really, I really, I can't believe it. Let me see, which one? Which one? <laughs> I mean, meanwhile, they're all, during the meeting when I'm giving a the lecture, they're all text messaging each other, you know? Look at the guy, he thinks he's got a glass eye. Which one? I'm not sure. He's got one on the left, I'm not sure. But, you know, I know what's going on, I'm not a jerk. <laughs> it came in very handy. When I was dating a long time ago, my wife is here tonight, I gotta be very careful. My wife is Cuban. She has a huge machete at home. <laughs> Don't talk about the glass eye. Don't talk about the old girlfriend. So, so far, we're gonna have a very bad night. When I used to date a long time ago, Marlene, really true, a long, long time ago, 35 years ago, married 35 years. It's unbelievable. I think you better applaud one more time. 35 years right there right now. It's very important to have a glass side because I've only seen half of the things my wife's done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when I used to date, the glass side comes in very handy because when you date, you know, you're on a date with a girl and they're all beautiful for the first five minutes, aren't they? <laughs> Guys are all gorgeous, you know? Girl walks in, how you doing? Yes, very much. When you're out to eat, you know, you ask a person, what do you want to eat? And they, they tell you, well, whatever you want to eat, you know? When you get married, they tell you what to eat. But when you're dating, well, whatever you want to eat, honey. But maybe she gets ugly after a while. She treats the wait staff bad, you know? Maybe after a couple of minutes, you find out she's not really a girl, she's a guy, you know? <laughs> what do you do? Well, thank God, I've got a glass eye. <laughs> you hit the back of your head, the eye falls out. <laughs> Guess what? The date's over. Hey, honey, you forgot your purse. I got more purses back at the apartment. It's unbelievable. <laughs> then you get these big jerks in the subway, you know? They're much bigger than me. These are the guys who, who like, mug nuns, you know? Hey, I'm a macho, 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 man. I don't think I'm mug a, a nun tonight, you know what I'm saying? These are big, manly kind of guys, you know? They come to me in the subway. I'm reading my daily news. The Yankees played the day before. The New York Times, the stocks went down. I'm minding my own business. Guy walks up to me and says, hey man, I'm gonna mug your face. I said, what? <laughs> you talking to me, you punk? I take out my, my little pen, give him one of these. Guess what? The guy drops his gun, he takes it off the train. The guy's still running at the BQE. It's no big deal. Bunch of jerks, you know what I'm saying to you? One thing I make sure a very dangerous, not to live or do anything bad in Los Angeles County. Because these cops, when a riot breaks out, they get very scared, these white guys. Get the guy with the glass eye. He looks crazy. Get him. Hit him again. Hit him again. Very, very dangerous. <laughs> the other thing is, New Yorkers are always in a rush, right? Like tonight, you know, everybody's in a rush, going here, going there. I don't rush anymore. I'm too old to rush. I'll be dead soon enough, you know what I'm saying? I take my time wherever I go. But in the shower in the morning, people are always in a rush. They're taking a shower. They soap up your body, right? And uh, when, you, when you drop the soap, people are kind of lazy in this city, right? You drop the soap and you say, you know, do I really have to wash the rest of my body? <laughs> I washed enough. I got one armpit at least, you know? But you kind of debate, do I have to bend down now and pick up the soap? 
So I didn't wash anything else in my body. What's a big deal? But when your glass eye falls in the, in the bath, bathtub there, and you're kind of drunk, you kind of look at it, you're not quite, quite sure, am I looking at the eye? Is the eye looking at me? You don't know what's going on. You have no idea what's going on here. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'm in therapy, don't worry about nothing, I'm in therapy. I pay $4,000 an hour. My shrink's in therapy too, it's no big deal. My father came from Italy, that was his boat, that was his boat coming from Italy. He landed at Ellis Island, we're kind of a lazy Italian, we stopped right here in New York. Where else am I gonna go, Idaho? My father came to New York and says, that's nice, I think I'll live over here. So we lived here all our life. My father was uh, like a caveman Italian. <laughs> From the Parmesan period, it was unbelievable. <laughs> he kind of grunted all, you know, grunted. Like, the sound of mucus every morning, every morning. Blah, blah. I hate you, I hate your sister, I hate everybody. That was when the sun was shining out. It was unbelievable. <laughs> but he was a good guy. I really loved my father very much. When I was a kid, I sat between his legs when he watched TV. There was nothing sexual going on. He just sat between his legs. What can I tell you? On the floor. I was his, my father's remote control for about five years. Between the age of three and nine, I was my father's remote control. It's a long time ago. My father hit my, the right side of my head. That was channel two. Once in a while, I fell out, but what can you do? Hit the left side of my head, that was channel four. Hit the top of my head twice, that was the Yankee game. It was unbelievable. And we had a good time. But my father invented this the statement, when you see something, say something. You know all these terrorists out there? When you see something, say something? My father invented that. We'd be on the subway. My father, this girl would come in with a short dress you know, up to her belly button. My father would say, Ma, look at this putan over here. Hey, lady, you're a putan. You're a prostitute. Why do you pull your dress down? You want everybody to see your legs? Open your leg, let the whole world see. <laughs> Next stop, an old lady would come in. You see these people there, their pocketbooks, they have all day, but they put on their makeup in the subway. You know what I'm saying? Train's going like this, takes out a pen, you know. Oh, I'm very afraid because I want to poke her eye out, you know, I'm very cursed by the eyes, you know. My father would say, look at this disgusting of fat old woman over here. And they take out the little uh, lipstick and they put down their thing, like they'll get all over their face. It's like a Jackson Pollock painting here about an hour and a half. And, a half. and they pull out this iron claw to do their like little lashes. My father would say, listen to us, listen lady. No matter how much a painter you put on that face, you're still going to be ugly. Get out, disgusting person over here. But I, uh, I've taken this to a whole other thing, you know? I don't like people who are bad to other people. You know what I'm saying? There's this whole debate now in the Christian church around the world, should gay people get married, you know? My, and, and, the, and the room falls silent. <laughs> Where's he gonna go with this? What do I know? I'm on, I'm on, I'm mentally ill here. Where am I gonna go with this? <laughs> the idea is this. My father had another expression. He came from Italy. Now, mind your own business. You know what I'm saying? Mind your own business. I think, first of all, the idea that a person who's gay, they get married, it sends the wrong, nation, the wrong message to the nation. You know what I'm saying? Listen, if a gay couple wants to get married, let them get married. First of all, I think heterosexual. Okay, I got one minute left. I think uh, heterosexual marriages should be illegal. I've never seen any gay guy. I was sitting here all day long on 23rd Street. Guys walking hand in hand, girls arm in arm, you know. A little things going on here and there behind the bus. My, my glass eye was dilating for a couple of minutes. But I gotta go right away, but I wanna show you one thing before I go. I invented a shirt for people who are disgusting. And here it is. I should be ashamed of myself. You got somebody you don't like? They should be a shit. You should carry this around. Here's one for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got
guys on a bus, guys on a bus picking his nose, give him a t-shirt. God bless you. Have a good time. You know? Michael Jackson's doctors, they get several. How you doing, Michael Jackson? God bless you. Have a great night. Be good.